Okay, uh, good morning all. Uh, uh, myself, uh, Prajakta Sathe. Uh, I'm the uh, APMTT IIT Kharagpur uh, chapter chair. So today, uh, Professor uh, Alcherbani, he'll be presenting uh, today's uh, DL talk. So I would like to... Uh, uh, request uh, Professor uh, our, our uh, faculty advisor, Professor Sahu, to uh, introduce our today's uh, speaker. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor, for uh, giving me this opportunity as, uh, to introduce Professor El Shabini. Uh, I hope I am uh, uh, pronouncing your last name correctly, Professor. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a very good morning, Professor Elchabeni. I think it's 7 o'clock early in the morning over there in Colorado. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you for uh, um, uh, really appreciate uh, getting uh, take, uh, you know, uh, giving this talk early in the morning from there. Uh, 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 now, I would like to introduce Professor Elchabeni. Uh, he received an honor BSc degree in electronics and communication, an honor BSc degree in applied physics, and an uh, M engineering degree in electrical engineering, all from Cairo University, Egypt, in 1976, 1979, and 1982, uh, respectively. He received his PhD degree in electrical engineering from Manitoba University, Canada, in 1987. He started as a uh, part time software and system design engineer uh, from 1980 uh, until 1982 at Automated data system center uh, at Cairo, Egypt. Uh, Dr. El Shabini joined the faculty at University of Mississippi in 1987 as an assistant professor of electrical engineering. He became an associate professor uh, and uh, professor in 1991 and 1997 respectively. Follow After that, he was the associate dean for research and graduate programs from 2009 to 2013. He then joined the ECS department at Colorado School of Mines in August 2013. I believe that's a very beautiful area, the Colorado. Uh, is it in Boulder? I... Um, our university is in a small town called Golden. Okay, so I, it's a pretty uh, scenic area, especially Boulder and around that place. So uh, he, uh, he was appointed the interim department head for ECS from 2015 to 2016 and became the E department head from 2016 to 2018. He spent a sabbatical in 1996 at the University of California, Los Angeles, and was a visiting professor at uh, Magdeburg University in Germany and at Tampere University of Technology in Finland during the summers of 2005 and 2007, respectively. Uh, in 2009, he was selected as Finland Distinguished Professor by the Academy of Finland and TECES. Dr. El Shabani is the editor-in-chief for ACES Journal, a past associate editor to Radio Science Journal, a past chair of the Engineering and Physics Division of Mississippi Academy of Science, a past chair of Educational Activity Committee for IEEE Region 3 Section, and the general chair for the 2014 APS-RC Symposium, the president of ACES Society from 2013 to 2015, and the IEEE Antennas and Propagation Society Distinguished Lecturer for 2020 to 2022. Dr. El Shabani is a fellow member of IEEE and a a ACES. Uh, with this, uh, I would, it's uh, really a great honor to have you, uh, Professor, for this talk. Uh, I would uh, now pass on the uh, thing on to you to take over and uh, give us an introduction to radio frequency identification. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, just, Ferris, uh, I would like to make sure you all can hear me okay. Yes, we can. 
Okay, yes, good. So, uh, good evening to everyone uh, uh, here, and I'm uh, honored to be invited to give you this talk. And I'm going to go through a few of the slides that represent some of the work that our group has done over the years. And uh, before that, a brief introduction of RFID uh, tags and systems. And uh, at the very end, uh, I hope I receive some questions from you, and uh, I'll try to answer as much as I can. So radio frequency identification uh, uh, basically uh, started many, many years ago, but uh, became very, very important in the last decade or so for so many applications. So this talk is going to uh, go through some a brief introduction and then uh, the technology around RFID system. And then I'm going to focus on the UHF RFID. There are different frequency ranges for RFID systems and different ways of operation. And then I'm going to focus here on UHF uh, RFID systems. And then I'm going to show you some uh, new designs of readers and antennas that are being used in uh, a system like this and some application at the very end. So to start with an introduction, uh, let's first figure out what this RFID, those four words came from. Uh, it basically stands for radio frequency identification. So you can see from the slide here, R is from radio, F from frequency, and ID from identification. And this technology uses basically RF signal. So if it is an RF signal, then basically we are not going to rely on line of sight uh, communication between two uh, objects or two things. So basically it's an RF signal that propagates in, in the media and uh, we should be able to receive something from the transmitter. And uh, examples of this, uh, we can see that uh, on the right here, uh, this uh, basically uh, something that we all use in, in terms of uh, <clears throat> tags that are embedded in a, in a card like uh, uh, a credit card or business card size and we can communicate with a device here and they have to be closer to each other because there is a strong mutual coupling between them here and working at a low frequency and other tags that uh, most of the time are hidden uh, and basically this area here is basically representing the RFID tag with the integrated chip into it. So these are very, very simple two examples that we can go through them uh, through their uh, use and operation uh, along the way through these slides. So what are the applications? Um, there are many, many applications in retail stores in defense, uh, in health, in transportation, and many, many uh, applications that comes up uh, day after day. Um, here is another example. Uh, in the post office, we use RFID. Uh, during traveling, also we use RFID. In banking, uh, luggage system, um, libraries, and so on. Many, many applications are evolving every day using RFID system. So let's look at how RFID system would work or what is the technology behind RFID uh, system. Uh, basically, we look at RFID component or a system component uh, in terms of three parts or three components, a reader, a tag, and a host media. The reader is basically the, uh, the component that will interrogate the tag, reads and write a tag, or send data for fix it, and this reader could be a fixed reader uh, located in uh, some places, or it can be a handheld reader. Now, this reader is going to interact with a tag, which we call it transponder, and that tag should store some information related to the item that's being tagged to, and it can be active or passive or semi-active, and we're going to go through this later on as well. And once we have the communication between the reader and the tag, we need something to be able to process the data and the communication between these two uh, uh, items here, which is basically our host, and that's very, very simply would be a computer or could be an embedded system, and a database can be used, and of course, software application can 
be updated and manage to be able to control everything. And I'm gonna show you some example on how we can embed, uh, how we can embed uh, computer hardware into a package using a specific software for a specific application as well. So here is one uh, example of an operation between a tag antenna, a reader, and a host media. And if there is something around also, the coupling between the signal that reflects back from the tag into this element, then it goes back to the reader and goes to the host media. So basically, the reader here initiates a signal that eventually goes to the tag, and the tag responds back, and the reader receives the signal back from the tag and sends it to the computer to process it. So this is basically the procedure. We notice here that we have an object in the way that could be there, could be one object, multiple object, or could be no object at all. Again, there is no line of sight between the reader and the tag because this is an RF signal that propagates in the space and uh, it depends on the distance between the tag and the reader. This RF signal could be in any form, a plane wave or spherical wave or cylindrical wave, also based on the antenna connected to the tag and the polarization of the antenna and the orientation and polarization of the tag. And we're going to talk about this as well. So uh, let's look at the uh, allocations of the frequencies that we can use for such a system. I'm going to focus on UHF. RFID frequencies, but we need to know that RFID has been started with low frequency application using inductive or capacitive coupling. An example of this is animal identification. Um, and also there is a frequency range, which is a high frequency, and that's basically also used an inductive coupling. An example of this is contactless smart card. An example of this that I showed it to you here, in, in this slide here, in this picture here. And, and the one that we're gonna focus on is a UHF uh, frequency range. And that basically depends on the backscattered signal from the tag to the reader. And the frequency range for UHF RFID basically goes from 840 all the way to 960 megahertz. There is recently 2.45 gigahertz uh, tags as well, and there is 5.5 gigahertz tags as well, but they are not as common as uh, UHF uh, uh, type tags. The big range that we see it here in the uh, frequency range here is basically divided into three different uh, ranges one for North and South America from 902 to 928. And Europe starts at the very beginning of the range from uh, 864 to 869. And Japan starts with uh, at basically at the very end of the range from 950 to 956. So these are the three different ranges of frequencies within the UHF uh, RFID systems that are being used, used in the world. Now, in addition to this, we need to look at the range itself. The range, which is basically the distance between the reader and the tag. For the low frequency, our range is going to be less than one centimeter. For the high frequency, it's going to be less than one meter. For UHF, we can achieve much, much larger than one meter. And obviously, for 2.4 and 3 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, we are going to be able to go much larger than one meter. And the type of coupling and all these things are basically close coupling if we are less than one centimeter, uh, remote coupling or intermediate range coupling for uh, UHF, for HF frequency. And basically electromagnetic waves or backscattering is the main phenomena for any uh, RFID tag and the UHF or higher frequency as well. So these two we call them lower short range RFID and these types here we call them long range RFID system. In addition to this, there are standards and protocols that control the communication between the reader and the tag as well. And you can see that these have been <coughs> uh, changed over time and they follow different uh, ISO system and 
the frequency itself of operation dictates what standards that we are going to use. You can see here, this is the standard that we are using for UHF. And, and basically, uh, ISO, this is the ISO that's being used. And the most updated uh, standard right now is EBC class 1 Gen 2. So let's look at the system uh, categorization. How do we characterize those three different items? Or how do we characterize the uh, communications between the tech and the uh, reader? Uh, the mode of operation can be either in full duplex or half duplex communication. It can be sequential. The transporter itself, which is a tag, can have a chip or can be a chipless with no chip at all. And we're going to discuss different types of tag that uh, have chips or no chips. And they can be active or passive or semi-active as well. In terms of the frequency range, we talked about this, low frequency, high frequency, UHF, and it can be characterized as short or long range, and it can be based on magnetic or electric uh, coupling. So uh, these are, uh, this slide shows <coughs> quickly the definition of full duplex, uh, half duplex, and sequential, and I'm assuming everyone uh, in the audience knows those definitions, so I'm not going to go through this. Um, these are well-known definitions for communication systems. But here we can see some of the tags that are being used on those such a system. On, in this picture here, we can see shipless RFID tags. Uh, in other words, these are tags that does not have an integrated circuit at all. This is a tag that has an integrated circuit that's basically identified with a very, very small dark um, black spot here. Uh, this is an active tag. These two tags obviously are passive tags. They don't have any batteries. This active tag has embedded battery in, into it. And these are also passive tags. And you can see the position of the chip here. And this is a semi-active tag. Means it does have a battery, but the battery is not on all the time. It's going to be on only when the reader triggers the tag and, uh, and woke it up, and then it's going to be active. So there is an advantage of using active tags. There is an advantage of using semi-passive tags. And also, there are some advantages of using passive tags. And we're going to go through this in a in, in few seconds. So here is another illustration to show you the comparison between the passive, semi-active, and the active tags. Uh, basically, uh, you can see that the passive tags are very, very cheap. The semi-active is a little bit more expensive, and obviously the active tag are much, much more expensive. And in terms of read range, uh, obviously this would give you the smallest read range. This would be an intermediate read range, and this would give you a very long read range. And in terms of operation itself, uh, before the operation, we can see also that since this is a passive tag, then it's going to stay for a long time. And uh, semi-active tag depends on the kind of battery inside. It's going to last for about three to five years. And active tag would obviously would be shorter lifespan relative to the semi-active tag because the battery in the active tag is on all the time. Now, in terms of operation, if we are looking at a passive system in which the tag is passive, doesn't have any battery, so the reader has to initiate the signal that goes to the tag, and then the tag reflects the signal back, and this reflected signal is basically what is received by the reader and processed by the host. In the same active tag, the same operation would occur. However, the battery that's embedded in the tag will be off until the tag is being excited or triggered by the reader due to this signal that is displayed here in green color. In terms of active system with active tag, the battery is on all the time and the tag is on all the time and transmitting signal all the time to the reader. So there is no uh, back and forth communication, but there is communication from the tag to the reader one direction. So that's why this system here uh, can provide long range, um, but can not provide a long lifespan, and it's very, very costly because of the existence of the batteries that's on all the time. Examples here of a passive tag, and also 
uh, a tag, embedded tag in a human body or a, an animal. Uh, but the classification here between these two systems is based on the uh, coupling mechanism and uh, how we read those tags. This system here is characterized as a near field system. This system here is characterized as a far field system. So we have to, the reader has to be very, very near to this tag here, and it can be a little bit further away in terms of meters, uh, one meter or more in terms of this far field system. Uh, this uh, slide here shows uh, different uh, commercial and available RFID tag. Most of these tags that you see here are passive tags, and most of them are being used for UHF system. Some of them, you can see that they are basically uh, dipole type tags with the chip in, in the middle. Some of them, you can see them in this shape or in this shape or in this shape that basically represents a tag that's connected to antenna that a circular polarized antenna so that the reflected signal would be a, a circular polarized signal to be easier to, uh, to uh, receive the packet scatter si signal from these tags in any direction with a reader antenna that's also a circularly polarized. So different types of tag, the one, two, three, four, five tags here, and this tag also represents circular polarization, and most of the other tags you see it here in this slide represents a linearly polarized tag. So <clears throat> now if we talk about tags with chips or tags with no chips, so what is the point of having tags with no ships? Uh, the conventional passive tag, basically they do have an integrated circuit and shape into them. And this integrated circuit is responsible for decoding the data embedded into the chip so that you can transfer this data back to the reader and the reader send it to the host and process it. But if you have a chipless RFID, now, we need to be able to see a, uh, a tag that doesn't have a chip, but is being constructed in such a way when we send a triggered signal from the reader into it, the reflected signal would convey some information. So the information conveyed back to the reader, it depends on the construction of the tag that's basically a chipless tag. And how do we characterize uh, this signal, I'm going to get to it in the next slide, but just to show you the importance of a chipless RFID tag. You can see this slide here, or this figure here. Since 2010 to 2020, and within 20 years, you can easily see that there are huge amount of papers and information about chipless RFID tags and chipless RFID tag integrated with sensors. The publications uh, about 10 years ago, ranges from about 150 all the way to 200 per year, and now it reaches 650 to about 500 per year for each one of these two categories. Very important characteristic, uh, very important topic to be working on and to still lots of work to be addressed in this area. And the reason for this is basically one main reason is the cost. A chipless RFID deck is not going to have an integrated circuit is going to be very, very cheap, and uh, you can fabricate it with different technology, uh, inkjet technology, printed technology, and uh, so many other uh, useful applications. You can bend it, you can uh, wash it, and all those kind of things that make it makes it much, much more useful and practical. And there is lots of research area in this uh, shipless RFID technology as well. So. So the basic concept of shapeless RFID tag is basically the tag itself, when it reflects the signal back, is going to give some signature. And you can see here, this signature here as a function of frequency. At certain frequency points, you can see a resonance uh, feature, and some other frequencies, there is no resonance. So based on the tag construction, here is one configuration, another configuration, and different configurations here. Every configuration and its combination of uh, printed arms here or dipole arms here will give you different signature in the frequency response. And the difference uh, signature of the frequency response is correlated to a specific information relayed back to the reader. And that's basically the concept of the chipless RFID tags. So basically what you see here is that the reader itself is going to send 
a signal with constant phase and constant amplitude to the shapeless tag. Then the received tag is, go is gonna receive this signal and then the construction of the tag that is gonna have multiple resonator is gonna construct uh, another signal that goes through the transmitter part of the tag that transmits back to the reader a signal that's composed of resonances as a function of frequency as you see it here, and also the phase is gonna change like you see it here. So out of this response, you can see when you have a resonance that's zero, when you don't have a resonance, that's basically one. So basically, if you look at the position of the references and the conveying this information into zeros and one, that basically the information that's basically represented by this tag. Obviously, this tag is gonna have this information. We will not be able to change the information related to this tag unless if we change the multi-resonator in, inside this tag itself, or you use another tag with different configuration of the resonator. So this is basically the concept. This is basically fabricated one time and stay with this information all the time. Doesn't have a battery, very cheap and very easy to uh, process. The key part here is how we can read this information and how we can process it effectively after receiving it by the reader. So there are three different technology for receiving signal uh, from shapeless RFID tag. One of them is based on the time difference of the received signal, uh, frequency, and the phase. So the received signal can, depend, uh, can be sensed by the phase of the signal, the received signal, the frequency response, or the time response. And I'm not gonna go through all these things because of the time limitation, but basically those are three different types of uh, communication between uh, chipless RFID tag and a uh, reader that basically used in this system. Here is another example of how a chipless RFID tag can convey different information. This one here represents 10011. This is a different com configuration, different information, and this is a different configuration with a different information. So I take each one of these three items represents three different tags with three different informations. You can also here see a, a, a tag that's composed of four different units. All of them are basically the same, but they are constructed in such a way that can give you a specific signature, but a bigger tag and a longer read range. Here is another example where the, uh, each element is basically the same, but oriented in a different way to provide a circular polarized reflected signal from the chipless RFID tag. And basically the configuration and the orientation give you different uh, tag ID as you see it here. So all these are basically, this one here is, uh, uh, is basically uh, printed on a paper using inkjet printing. The previous one here is basically fabricated on a cheap FR4 uh, printed circuit board. Uh, so let's look at the system operation itself and how the system operates. It's basically, if you have a fixed reader and you have several items, this reader can read all these items at once. Uh, each item here basically can have only a single tag or multiple tags. For example, these bottles, each one of them can have separate tag as well. Uh, a box here, you can see that uh, three different tags on three different sizes, uh, sides so that you can read it from every sign, side, and this cylinder structure here, you can see a tag here, and I'm gonna uh, discuss this cylinder structure later on in one applications. Again, we can have shapes on these tags, uh, frequency of operation is this range for UHF, and the read range is larger than one meter, and the tag could be passive or active or semi-active. The readers themselves could be handheld readers, could be fixed readers as you see it here, or could be an embedded reader into a system. Now I'm gonna show you later on how we embed some of these embedded readers into a robot so that we can localize the position of a robot or a miner inside a mine. Uh, that's one of the applications that we have worked on. Uh, so these are different types of passive tags, active tags, semi-active tag, and then tags with sensors. So these tags here uh, provide some sensing capabilities as well. 
and I'm going to show you some of the application as well, and the development of some humidity and temperature sensors that we have worked on. So basically going back to the operation between UHF tag and a reader, the reader basically has uh, either two antennas and basically one antenna acting as a transmitter and receiver. And most of the time it's one antenna acting as a transmitter and receiver. The antenna send command, the tag is being triggered. Uh, that basically uh, let the chip modulate the signal and reflect the signal back from the antenna connected to the tag in a form here that's being received by the receiving antenna and the reader basically uh, process this information through the host or the embedded computer or the computer system connected to it. So this is the simplest system uh, that you can think of in terms of UHF uh, system operation, but it's very, very important to figure out exactly what is the read range and what are the parameters and the factors that control the read range. The read range basically depends on this equation here. This R here represents the read range. Lambda is the wavelength corresponding to the frequency range of operation. And then um, B sub T is a transmitted power by the reader. This is the gain of the antenna of the reader. This is the gain of the antenna connected to the tag. And this is the polarization loss factor between the tag antenna and the reader antenna. And this is a mismatch in the tag uh, between basically the tag antenna and the chip that's connected to the tag antenna. This term here represents the minimum uh, sensitivity of the, uh, basically the chip connected to the uh, tag antenna. Uh, the sensitivity of the chip is very, very important. Uh, it's basically in the dominate, uh, nominate, dominator part here in this equation. And usually it's in the order of minus 15 to minus 20 dB. So the design of the chip is a key part in determining the read range as well. In addition to this, of course, the gain of the tag itself and the gain of the uh, uh, transmitting antenna from the reader. So there are lots of research area in terms of designing a reader antenna, a tag antenna, and basically the chip, which is a, basically a whole uh, a category that's basically outside of our uh, range of our field if we are only working with electromagnetic and antenna design. That's basically the electronic people uh, that basically design this. We need to take this information from here and figure out our read range or play with some other factors that we have here, specifically the mismatch between the impedance of the chip itself and the impedance of the tag. If we can tune our tag design to match the chip impedance, we would improve the efficiency here related to a matching, mismatching here. And with this way, we can improve significantly the read range. So these are the parameters that control the read range. And there are some other factors that affect this. The size of the tag, its orientation, basically if it is correctly oriented relative to the uh, reader antenna, uh, I'm talking about uh, basically uh, if we have the reader antenna is circular polarized and the tag antenna is linearly polarized, then there is going to be an orientation of the tag that would give you the maximum reception by the reader antenna, the angle of the tag itself also, and where is the tag is being placed? Is it placed on a dielectric media, on a wall, on a metal object, and is there any multi pass effect due to existing objects around the tag or if there are any metals object around it or behind the tag so, uh, uh, as well. So all these are factors that affect the read range. All these are the parameters that included in the equation for the read range here to determine the read range of the tag. Uh, this is a system. Uh, basically, uh, it's basically uh, generated and designed by a company in Finland. It's called Tech Formance RFID system. It's a very, very small chamber uh, that can sit on a desktop and it does have a linear polarized antenna and basically rotated table here. And you can do the measurement inside this chamber for many UHF, uh, UHF uh, <coughs> uh, tags as well. In terms of uh, difference between UHF RFID tags and barcode, uh, 
specifically if we're talking about chipless RFID tag, one would ask, so what is the difference between chipless RFID tag and barcode? And uh, one main difference is that I can read so many tags per second because I'm using RF signal and I'm not using a uh, line of sight, but I can't use, look, I can't read more than one tag per second if I'm using a barcode. I can use, I can read all the tags simultaneously. I can't read the barcodes on different items uh, other than sequentially. Uh, here we use line of sight, here it is no line of sight, and the accuracy of reading is basically about 80% for barcodes, and it's much, much higher in terms of uh, RFID tags, and the storage and the processing of the information is available in an RFID system is not available in a barcode, and basically I can integrate sensors into, into the UHF RFID tags, I can do this in the barcode system. So these are the main differences between a barcode and uh, RFID text system. Now let's look at the design of the reader antenna because it's very critical in the gain of the antenna, polarization of the antenna to improve the read range. Sometimes you need a larger read range. Sometimes you need uh, antennas that provide wide coverage so that you can read multiple tags in a small area and so on. So. If you look at some of the designs that we have designed over the past few years, this is one of them in which we integrated a batch antenna and partitioned loop antenna into one design. The loop antenna is responsible for near field measurement of an RFID tag and the batch antenna is responsible for far field measurement of RFID tag. So one antenna basically designed can be connected to the reader and it can perform two operations, near field and far field uh, uh, radiation and uh, interrogation of an RFID tag. Another antenna that you see it here is basically universal type antenna. It's composed of multi layers and a patch antenna with corner, uh, edge corner and slot. And it's universal, so it can be used for all frequency ranges in uh, Japan, Asia, and basically United States. And you can see here the very, very good match of this antenna. So the uh, mismatch, uh, or basically the uh, S11 or the for the antenna is very, very good for the entire frequency band. You can see here the axial ratio is also very, very good. So it provides very good circularization and it provides you a very large gain relative to those type of antennas that we use in RFID system. That's about 9.25 dBi gain for this antenna. You can see the comparison between the measured and uh, simulated uh, return loss for this antenna and you can see at minus 10 dB here that's covering the entire frequency band and uh, both in simulation and measurement as well. Uh, another antenna is basically uh, ultra wide beam width. You can see from the radiation button here from the antenna the beam width is very very wide and that's basically used in areas where you have condensation of multiple items tagged and you need to read them all at once. Uh, this is basically a designed and fabricated on a cheap FR4 uh, substrate. Uh, you can see the uh, matching or the reflection coefficient here and the composition of the antenna. It does have two ports and the uh, isolation between the port is basically uh, in the order of minus 28 dB. Uh, in fact, in this range here is about minus 30 dB in the operating frequency range. Uh, this antenna also, you can see here a very, very good uh, isolation between uh, co-polarized and cross-polarized information and you can see the gain of the antenna is basically constant for different plane cuts of the radiation button and it's approaching about 3.5 dB. So you have very wide coverage, you have about 3.5 dBi gain and a cross, uh, cross coupled signal is very, very low with this design. Another antenna in which we have omnidirectional UHF RFID uh, uh, reader antenna. And that's basically when you would like to read all around 
and you don't want to miss any spot. And again, it's fabricated on a cheap uh, substrate, FR4, and the construction of the antenna is, as you see it here, with the corresponding radiation pattern. Again, you can get a gain of about 5 dBi, and the reflection coefficient is basically uh, covering the entire frequency band as you see it here. And another antenna that also provide omnidirectional radiation pattern, but also much, much more miniaturized so that you can have it uh, installed on handheld readers. And the configuration of this antenna give you about 4.5 dB gain and a very good match at uh, US uh, operating frequency. Uh, again, if you have the luxury of the space, you can construct basically four by four uh, antennas that are housed in a reader. And the reason for this is that you can use a phase array system connected to those antenna, and you can control the main beam of the uh, reader antenna so that you can target different uh, directions. And that basically depends on one of the application I'm going to describe later on, in which we would like to have the reader antenna has a tag that basically that has an antenna that basically change the direction of the main beam and detect the tags in different directions. This configuration of four by four antennas provide 20 dBi gain and its circular polarization for the entire frequency ranges from about eight. 188 to 938. Uh, so it does provide a full scanning RFID application as one of the applications I'm going to describe later. So uh, let's talk about some of the applications and uh, what kind of application we can see in RFID system. Obviously, you can see so many applications and many, many more that are coming every day in retail, in warehouses. Uh, supply chain, uh, tracking people or animals or uh, basically manufacturing industry and so on. So in addition to this, we should not forget that RFID tech can be integrated with sensing sensors to provide sensing applications. Here, for example, capacitive touch sensors. This is also a passive sensor for tracks detection. Uh, strain sensors, gas sensors, temperature sensors, and you can do this uh, using uh, RFID uh, <coughs> uh, mercilessly uh, powered sensors as well. So some of these sensor applications uh, we have uh, worked on to provide temperature and humidity as a sensor as well. But before I do this, let me show you the first uh, RFID tag construction that we have done for an omnidirectional uh, identification of a paper layer. Uh, basically, the paper layer is here, and if it is sitting on a shelf, we would like to figure out which paper layer and in which area to be able to detect. When you put it on a shelf, you don't know which orientation, so you need to be able to read it from any orientation. And to do this, we created a tag antenna composed of these three bow ties connected together, and we put a chip in the middle here. So basically, you can see that the chip here in one bow tie, and basically two bow tie, uh, other bow tie in the other area. That basically allowed us to have an omnidirectional reading around the uh, paper rear and uh, feeding between the feeding elements between the uh, bow tie that has a chip and the other two surrounding bow tie are basically constructed like this to be able to give you the omnidirectional pattern that you see here. You can see also the cross-coupled component, which is very, very low, that give you a very good omnidirectionality with good gain for the antenna as well. Uh, here is a temperature sensor tag, which is basically what you see it here, basically fabricated after being designed. It basically has a water pocket here, and this water pocket is going to be affected by the temperature of the surrounding. And when the temperature changes, it basically changes the uh, basically the matching between these two points where the chip is connected to these two points of this tag of this matching circuit here that's connected to the chip. So the environment temperature of the environment is going to affect the 
matching or the input impedance of this section that's going to change the uh, reflection coefficient between this section and the chip impedance that's going to let you operate at minimum uh, values here at different frequencies and those different frequencies are going to be correlated to different temperature and with this technology we'll be able to see what operating frequency we have and that's going to be correlated to the temperature of the medium of course we need to have closer to this uh, temperature sensor tag, uh, another tag that we call it reference that's not going to be affected by the temperature and basically the operating frequency of this tag and this tag are going to be different and that difference is going to give us the temperature of the medium itself. You can see here the fabricated one and the fabricated tag and the reference tag inside the chamber during the measurement and obtaining these results. Uh, this one also is a humidity sensor it's basically a captain tape, and on one side we have silver uh, side of a capacitor. On the other side, the other uh, face of the capacitor, and the capacitance between these two uh, strips is basically affected by the humidity of the medium. The humidity changes the captain primitivity. The primitivity between the two uh, strips it changes uh, the capacitance. And once the capacitance is changing, then the matching, the impedance between these two terminals is going to change. And then the matching of this impedance to the integrated circuit impedance is going to give you different operating frequency. So the different operating frequency is going to be tied to the, the permittivity of the captain, and the captain permittivity is going to relate it to the humidity of the medium. Then those operating frequency is going to a direct indication of the humidity of the medium where this RFID tag uh, is basically placed. Here is another tag that's basically very miniaturized and embed it as well so we can basically see it uh, a picture of it after it's being designed or while it's being designed is as you see it here this is basically inkjet printing on a, a flexible media and then basically it is being covered and basically all what you see is a circular area very small circular area here and you can bend it as well and you can conform it to different objects you can see a very good read range it's about uh, 2.5 meters for this very small uh, design tag. And in this slide here, I'm showing you a fabricated tag uh, with very straight line, and this is based on inkjet printing. And when you print this tag, you can have one layer, two layers, three layers on the inkjet printing here. And the concept here is basically, we don't really have to waste so much ink this is a silver ink and we can design the tag based on the read range that we are looking for this is also another fabricated tag uh, uh, both of them are compared with a commercial type tag and they perform very well relative to the commercial type tag so in terms of the inkjet printing for this tag for example here on this silver ink if i have only one layer of ink or two layers or three layers or four layers of ink you can easily see that for four layers of ink i can reach about 7.75 read range if one layer of ink i can reach about five meters read range so if my application doesn't require more than five meter read range, I can save a lot by only putting only one layer of ink. And how many layers I have to put here depends on the read range that I would like to have. Uh, this is also a different application. You can use the tag to create some sort of uh, logo for your business as well. And in this slide here, that's uh, basically a tag that's been designed by two students, one undergraduate and one graduate students. One was at University of Mississippi and was a, one at Timbury University of Technology. And these are the two logos, University of Mississippi, TUT. They integrated the two logos of the two universities and created a tag with this logo here. So you can see that they can shape the combined logo of two universities, put a chip here, and basically create a tag that's omnidirectional. And they measured it and simulated, and you can see a perfect match bit between the measure and simulation uh, in two different plane cuts. With, along with a very good uh, matching as well for very wide uh, range of frequencies. This was done uh, in Finland and that was basically using the European frequency range. Uh, another 
tags that's been designed by our group is this tag here to be placed on water bottles. Water bottles is very, very uh, challenging uh, item because the water is very lossy. And when you trigger the chip on a tag connected to a, a water bottle, basically the reflected signal is very, very hard to get back because of the penetration of the signal into the lossy water and the water would absorb the signal. So it does require a specific design and this is the design that we came up with. And basically you can have the tag here and uh, on this antenna platform, and then you can have um, antenna conductor, uh, plastic bottle and the water. So these are the different layers of the tag. And you can see here in this slide, the directivity of the tag that's almost omnidirectional here uh, for a very wide cross range of angles around the slender that's for also for three different frequencies you can see almost only direction which is the blue curve this is basically the performance of the tag when placed on a bottle in terms of read range for this frequency of operation here you can also see that we have a read range about 2.5 or a little bit more uh, a minimum of two two meters a maximum of about three meter read range, which is a very, very good range to, to have for such application. Uh, many times we have multiple bottles in one box. And if we have this configuration or this configuration, we can also sketch the read range at those three different frequencies for this configuration or this configuration. So the radial distance here represents the read range, and you can easily see that the read range from any direction for these two configuration is larger than one meter, which is very, very sufficient for those kind of applications. So it's a very, very successful tag to be used for water bottles or any uh, bottle that has liquids inside as well. Here's another tag in which we you design it in a planar form and then you concave it or uh, conform it to a uh, uh, basically metal cylinder. Uh, having tags for metal object is very challenging and we need to be able to not to short circuit the tag itself and the chip, but we need to get a reflected signal back. So this tag here, you can see here a comparison between <coughs> uh, the curvature of the cylinder itself from 15 millimeter, 25 to 35. In the 25 and 35, we have the measured and simulation results uh, in these two curves and these two curves. In the five, 15 millimeter, we have only simulation results. And you can see the read range uh, ranges basically uh, decline a little bit with the radius of the curvature increases, but still at the largest curvature here, you can see that we have a read range that's above two meter as well. In terms of radiation pattern, if the antenna is flat, you can see this radiation pattern. In terms of the curved structure sitting on a metallic object, you can see this kind of radiation pattern. So basically, around this very wide beam here, you can still see most of the energy radiating and we can still be able to detect the tag. Uh, you can also see tags that are basic use uh, uh, sort to uh, close here. And for this application, if you have the clothes being washed, if you wash it one time, two times, three times, you can obviously expect some degradation in the read range from about maybe five or six meter all the way to four meter. So after so many washes, the degradation would happen, but still after three wash with the experiment that we conducted, we can see we still can achieve a four meter read range. Uh, so to design tags, most of the designs that I have shown you is basically linear polarized tag. It's also useful to design a circular polarized tag. And here is one design in which we uh, did a circular polarization tag and uh, compared these results that is being designed using finite difference line domain package with HF test simulation and measured data, measured sim, uh, measured uh, data as well. And you can see a very, very good correlation between the sim, two sim, simulator and measured data. Uh, and another application is basically to build a complete integrated system using a UHF RFID tag. And this basically is an inventory system that's basically integrated into a handheld unit like this that has a small keyboard, a touch LCD screen, the back of it you are going to see a RFID reader, 
with integrated wireless transmitter uh, chip and basically uh, RFID uh, development kit and uh, all of them are powered by a battery and an antenna connected to the side. You can see here the antenna board. This integrated system hardware and software is basically designed by one of uh, our undergraduate students taking a senior design project and took him about two semesters to understand what's RFID, to learn the uh, component of RFID system, uh, build the hardware, build the case, integrate all these components, and write the software that communicates with the tags, retrieve the information, and transmit it to a database for a host system as well. So we have here Raspberry Pi, we have some regulators for the power supply, and we have the uh, RFID development kit M6E, and uh, <clears throat> the display and the keyboard as well. Uh, another system that we also are working, we have been working on it, and we're still working on it, is to have a handheld uh, breather antenna uh, connected to a helmet uh, or carried by a miner going into a mine to be able to figure out the position of the miner inside the mine. And those applications will don't have a GPS system, so we have to rely on RFID uh, technology itself. So the first step in this, which was done about a year ago, is to design a robot like this. And this robot here with the hardware and the antenna is basically going into the mine with an embedded uh, Raspberry Pi that has embedded software that we developed to communicate with the RFID development kit to be able to detect the position of the robot. And to do this, we relied on uh, the triangulation between the position of three different tags. If we have three different tags at exact uh, coordinates, we can determine the position of the robot. And to determine the position of the robot based on the reading of three tag in the system, we basically use these equations here in which we can uh, cast basically multiple equations to be able to determine the uh, position of the reader, which is here, or the position of the uh, robot, which would be here, which later on would be the position of the minor. Now, to be able to do this, we need to read three tags, and we need to know the distance between the tags and the position of the uh, robot itself. And that position is determined by R123. And when we read a tag, we read what we call it RSS value, which is a return signal strength. Uh, all, almost the return signal strength is very, very small in terms of value, it ranges from minus 45 dB all the way to minus 80 dB. And you can easily see because of the surrounding, um, at certain level, you may be able to see multiple points on this curve here that reflects different distances. So basically, if I have severe error in terms of identifying these distances based on the RSSI value, then I will not be able to implement those equations accurately and the position of the robot is not going to be determined accurately. So to avoid this problem, we looked into something completely different. Uh, that's basically, instead of having uh, one directional antenna, we have an antenna system that based on phase array system in which the main beam of the antenna can be phased, uh, phased so that it can give us a different uh, direction for the main beam. So we can scan in the array. The robot would move into one spot, scan the beam, and stops whenever it sees a tag, records this direction, continue scanning, uh, uh, to the second tag and records this direction, third tag, and records this angular position. And with those three angular positions, we should be able to know the angular position of the tag, and we know the x and y coordinate of the tag. So from the angular positions of the tag, which are determined here by uh, alpha here, for example, for a specific reference, the angle here, alpha one, two, and the angle alpha, three, two, these are the three angular positions that are determined by scanning antenna system here, and the position of the three tags. Then we have six items that based on those six parameters, 
we should be able to construct some equation to determine accurately R1 and R2 and R3. And the way to do this is basically to construct those nine equations. Again, we have the three angles that we determine by the scanning system. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, the three angles are basically um, determined here. Uh, the angles here in A12, A32, A31, those are the angles. And basically, the coordinates X and Y for the tags would determine the distance between the tag D12, D1, uh, D23, and D13. So those are going to be unknown quantities. Our unknown quantities in this system are basically those A's and, B, uh, A's, and B's and C's. And basically, ultimately, the R1 and R2 and R3. So we have nine unknowns, six known quantities. We construct nine equations. Once we solve those nine equations, we can get those distance R1, 2, and 3 much more accurately. And once we have this much more accurately, we can determine the position of the robot much more accurately. So we tested this system. <clears throat> and here is one example. The actual position of the robot was determined by these two coordinates, X and Y. And when we apply this algorithm, we obtain these two values, which are very, very close to the actual position. And basically, another configuration where two of the tags are very close to each other, and we also have very good successful determination of that uh, position of the robot itself. Uh, <clears throat> so, in, in this algorithm that we have, determined is we used angle of arrival or the angle angular position of the tag itself rather than our SSI value. And we managed to be able to make some changes in those angles and determine the accuracy of this algorithm as well. Uh, so this robot component, basically a Raspberry Pi, Arduino system for processing information and a motor and uh, uh, RFID development kit as well. Uh, very similar to the uh, integrated inventory system that we have built before. And this is basically the port that which that connects to the antenna that uh, at one time we use a uh, Yagi uh, with antenna, at another time uh, this needs to be replaced by phase type antenna. So this is antenna used. But we configure the robot so that the robot, when it stops in one position, it rotates so that it can predict the angular position of the tag that is basically positioned at the specific X and Y coordinates. Uh, so the process is very simple. It's basically communication between the reader antenna and Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi communicate with Arduino to for the for the processing and then later on communicate with the motor to basically move forward or backward and also to provide the rotation so that we can read uh, different tags. So uh, that's basically what I would like to convey to you today. But I would like to mention that uh, most of what I presented here is uh, a result of collaboration between different faculties that I have worked with over the years and different graduate students who are right now are working in industrial at university and our current uh, graduate students who are working in different, uh, basically uh, different application. Some of them are undergraduate and some of them are master students and some of them are PhD students. Uh, with this, uh, basically, um, if you uh, would like, I can simply uh, package this presentation and provide you the slides specifically because I have here uh, eight slides that uh, presents uh, some of the publications that we have uh, published over the year related to the topic I just presented to you today. So with this, I end up my presentation and I welcome any questions from you. Uh, thank you, Professor el uh, So if anybody has any questions, uh, please, uh, 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 we can have, uh, I think, uh, Projector, we have uh, roughly 10 more minutes, right? Uh, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. Uh, uh, actually, we'd really like to thank Professor El Shabini for the nice uh, talk uh, and introducing us and going through from the basics all the way to all the finer, finer details of uh, RFID uh, tags. Uh, so, if anybody has any questions, uh, please, uh, you can uh, shoot 
Professor Elshabini? Yeah, yeah. I think is, uh, you can uh, turn on the mic and uh, ask the questions. Sir, can I ask Hello? a question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, uh, good evening, sir. Sir, actually, yeah, I want to... I wanted to ask uh, in the RFID system. So the reader is sending an unmodulated signal as well as it is sending a carrier signal to wake if the tag is passive, like it cannot itself uh, wake the battery because we need to also power the battery also the signal from the RFID reader would also help in powering up the battery of the uh, sorry, the chip of the uh, tag. So sir, um, do we send two signals from the from the reader to the tag one having one uh, wanting the data back which would be modulated by the data in the tag and one for powering up the chip i am confused if we send two signals or we send only one signal from the reader to the tag yes uh, as you mentioned the reader sends an unmodulated signal to the tag and the tag is composed of an integrated circuit and an antenna connected to it, uh, or the shape of the tag itself, we call it tag antenna. And once the ship is being triggered by the energy coming from the unmodulated and the carrier coming from the, the reader antenna send a, a unmodulated signal on a carrier. It goes to the chip of the tag and some of the energy of this signal is being converted into a voltage that turns the chip on. And the chip basically looks at the unmodulated signal and based on the shape of the uh, RFID tag, the scattered signal is gonna be modulated and goes back to the uh, uh, antenna of the reader. Uh, so, sir. Uh, uh, we send two signals from the reader to the tag or only one unmodulated signal. The same signal powers up the chip and gets modulated by the data or there are two signals. And there is only one signal but is being transmitted, uh, one unmodulated signal but it's basically transmitted uh, multiple times. It is not one signal, it's not one pulse, it's basically continuous uh, transmission from the reader uh, antenna. Okay, so sir, on first transmission, uh, it uh, powers up the chip and on subsequent transmissions, it gets modulated by the data inside the tag. Um, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is one more question, I think, Rachna Rajput, uh, please go ahead and ask the question or I can read it if, uh, I would request Rachna, is she there? Yes, Rachna is there, right? So anyway, I'll read her question, Does R do RFID tags have problems with water, if there is a more? Yes, and you have seen in one of the applications that we have put, uh, we have designed an RFID tag to sit on the uh, outer shell of a water bottle. Uh, you have to have a specific design for the tag to be able to work. Um, there are tremendous research right now in designing tags to sit on a metal object, and there is also a tremendous research right now in terms of tags that are sitting on a human tissue, a human arm, human body, because they are very lossy. And the same concept also, I would say that if you have a tag embedded in a liquid, it's going to be very challenging to design a tag uh, with a large read range, specifically if it is a passive tag, so that you can be able to read it from a distance. So all those all those applications are still a uh, very active research area and any design of tags for those applications would be a very good tag to, to look at. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Uh, there is one more question from Durga Purbe. Uh, are you there? Uh, Durga, I don't think she is, I'm not sure if she's there, so I'll read the question on her behalf. In case of RFID, how to choose printable material for better performance? 
Uh, can you repeat the question again, please? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In case of RFID, how to choose a printable material for better performance? Okay, so the printable material, uh, it's basically what kind of conducting ink you are going to use for printing the tag. And you have seen in one and a couple of the slides that I presented here, we have designed tag that are based on silver type ink. And the tag is basically uh, uh, being inked on a substrate one time, two times, three times, up to four times. And uh, how many layers of ink you put uh, on the shape of the tag depends on the read range that you would like to have. So basically any conducted, conducting ink that you can use in any uh, printing system that can accommodate this conducting ink is basically what you can uh, use. Uh, there are also spray cans that has sprays that's very conductive and we have done this uh, early on by basically shaping up a tag uh, with a slot and then basically spraying this slot with this conductive uh, spray and then taking this template and connecting a chip between the two arms of this basically sprayed ink and we create a tag. So basically you need to look at the ink that's conductive and the conductivity of the ink is a determining factor of uh, how the read range would be for the tag. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor. I do not see any further questions. Anybody has any other questions for Professor? Uh, yes, sir. There is one more question uh, from Manisha. So, hello. Uh, yes, please. Uh, please, you can you can shoot that question. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the question is like, so you want to know what's the difference between an antenna and a tag? Okay, antenna is basically any kind of antenna that we, all, we are all familiar with. And I showed you examples of antennas that are connected to the reader to transmit the signal. Now, a tag, RFID tag, is composed of two things. Uh, a chip, for example, if it is with a chip, and basically something connected to it. And uh, let's look here at the slides and any one of these, for example, this one here. You can see that the white area here is basically the silver ink. The chip is in the middle and the brown area is a substrate. So this is a tag that's composed of a chip and the silver ink here, that's what I call it tag antenna. And this tag antenna is basically sitting on a substrate. Here is a captain material. So antenna by itself is an antenna that's basically fit from a certain port to transmit. But a tag antenna is basically the shape of the tag that's connected to the chip itself. Does this answer your question? Uh, uh, Manisha, does it? Okay, yes. Uh, she has responded in the chat box. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are no further questions, uh, I would like to really uh, thank uh, uh, Professor for the a nice talk and i would uh, for the closing of this session i'll hand it over to the uh, to prajakta she can uh, conclude the session yeah. prajakta please take over thank you thank you for conducting this thank you all for coming and attending this lecture yeah uh, yes uh, thank you uh, thank you professor sao uh, and thank you uh, professor ashurbani for this uh, informative talk uh, it was uh, really uh, great uh, to have you here and uh, we also hope that uh, you'll visit uh, IIT Kharagpur uh, once uh, this uh, COVID situation gets a little bit normal. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. And yeah. I just would like to mention to you that uh, my term of uh, distinguished lecture has been extended for one more year. 
So there, there could be an opportunity to visit in, in the future. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. That will be great, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, then thank you for all the attendings. And uh, please make sure to uh, submit the attendance form. And uh, yes, uh, so we can conclude the session now. So thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.